Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good that we have come together and we can worship on this Thursday of Holy Week. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as Christ has loved us. Let us love one another. Beloved people of God, this is the day when Christ, our Passover Lamb, surrendered Himself to those who would kill Him, setting us free from sin and death forever. This is the day when Christ, our Teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash the disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his followers, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. Friends, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day, let us pray. O oh God, your love is embodied in Jesus Christ who washed disciples' feet on the night of His betrayal. Wash us from the stain of sin so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow Your Son through every trial and praise Him always as Lord and Christ who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading from the psalm this evening is a selection from Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, followed by verses 12 through 19. I love the Lord because He has heard my voice and my supplications, because He inclined His ear to me, Therefore, I will call upon Him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all His bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all His people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His faithful ones. O Lord, I am Your servant. I am your servant, the child of your servant girl. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I'll pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all His peoples, in the courts of the houses of the Lord, in the midst of O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Friends, these are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we continue our worship this evening, it is right that we too come and confess our sins, both corporately and individually. So let us pray now a prayer of confession. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill Your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love, or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear then this good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. 
and Christ prays for us. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, as forgiven members of the body of Christ, let us share the peace that comes from Him to those around us. The peace of Christ to be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, by your word and spirit, you've given us a new commandment to love and serve one another in Jesus' name. Let the good news of your liberating love be sealed in our hearts and shown in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gospel reading this evening comes from the Gospel according to John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17, and continuing with verses 31 through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart the world to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already placed into the, placed into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself, and he poured a basin and, be a, and began to wash the disciples' feet. And with them, the towel, and wiped them with the towel that he had tied around him, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet, had put on his robe, and returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor the messenger greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Friends, these are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We gather tonight on a day we call Monday Thursday, the Thursday of Holy Week, where we celebrate and we pay homage to this institution of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Every time we come to the table, we begin hearing those words with on the night in which he was betrayed. That's tonight. These disciples, they were gathered together there with Jesus to fulfill part of everyday life of being Jewish. It was a Passover meal for them. Sacred meal and one they looked to share together, but a part of the rhythm of life for them all. Probably more akin to spring break week than holy week. But Jesus had given them instructions, had told them where to go and how to gather and where they would meet in this upper room. He gathers them there. Nonchalantly, he stands up from the table. He takes off his robe around him. He ties a towel and he begins to serve those who would typically serve him. When he gets through, he asks them if they understand what he has done, and he tells them that he has given them an example. An example of what they are to do and how they are to treat one another. And, and that example carries on to us. Yes, we, we are to be tending to the cares of all humanity. Binding up the wounds and tending to the sore and the dirty feet of all of God's children but also hosting tables and open feast of joy where this supper can be celebrated. It's this example that Christ gives us later becomes Monday. Monday is a, a word that we pick up in the middle of the 1300s, 1200s. Little Middle English and French background leading all the way to a Latin root of mandatum, to mandate. Yes, this is the Thursday in which Christ gives us a mandate. He tells us that from now on, this is a new commandment. This is the new law. This is the mandate that He has given us. That each and every time that we eat ourselves, that we know and we recognize those who are without. Perhaps each and every time we slow down and we pray a prayer of confession and hear words of grace come back to us. We're reminding of that cleansing as well. That cleansing that like Jesus tells us, once we are washed, we are clean. We are to love others. And not be focused upon ourselves quite as much. So as we do continue to, to walk our lives of discipleship, it's right that we don't skip over parts of stories. We see that even in this moment gathered there, that even those closest to Jesus would struggle understanding this mandate. They would struggle understanding how, how this would, be, would usher in the kingdom of God. How this could possibly be a way to bring in a rule of a new king, Christ. How this could be the fulfillment of the glorification of God. As Jesus says, 
Yes, I suspect that that evening they were glancing around the table, wondering what this mandate was about. How were they to live this out loving others? How were they to go about showing Christ's love to the world? Friends, we pick up this same story and we come to a table and we come knowing that we too need our feet washed. But in that reminder, we know that we're also called to then turn and kneel to our neighbor and to wash their feet out of love. To bind up their wounds with grace. To feed their soul with words of Scripture and of prayer. To feed their bellies of food, of nourishment. All seeking that we may grow in love. That we may grow in our understanding and in our abilities to live out this new commandment. So friends, as we come to this table tonight, as we come and we begin to grasp our commitment to this meal, Our commitment to sharing this meal with all those that we encounter, all those that we see hungry, to all those that we see in thirst. Just as we said earlier, we come with this special gift that we are given in this meal. For we bring a remembrance to each and every meal, but in this one that we remember, Christ gives Himself ultimately to us through the breaking of His body and the pouring out of His blood. We may have death no more. So friends, on this solemn night, as we come to this table having shared common meal, may we come knowing that we share common grace through Christ our Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. Yes, friends, this table we come to tonight signifies that table that Christ uses to gather together his disciples, to instill in them and to mandate this feast and this remembrance, this institution of service of Christians, service of disciples of Christ to the world. That's the meal we are invited to this evening. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, creator and ruler of the universe. 
you made us in your image and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made a covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot your covenant, you spoke through the prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices in the celestial choirs and with the faithful of every time and every place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of, of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. In humility, he descends from the heights to kneel in obedience to love's command. He who is boundless takes on our bondage of sin. He who is free takes our place in death's prison. He who is risen leads us to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine and as these gifts from you, we celebrate with joy the redemption of one for us in Christ Jesus. Accept our sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving as living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and yet risen. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup that we bless may be the communion of body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God by the power of your spirit, to live as love commands, bound to Christ. Set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. As Jesus gave us life of ours, help us to live our lives for others and humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when with the redeemed of all ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God. With the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, let us be brave and bold as we pray as our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, friends, it was on the night in which our Lord was betrayed. Gathered together in that upper room, he took bread. Giving thanks to God, he broke it. He said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. The same manner after supper, Jesus took the cup said, this cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to take communion as 
mandated by Christ, bread of life, broken for us, a cup of salvation, put out for the forgiveness of sins. God of grace, we give to you thanks for this feast of redemption we have shared in the body and blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim the great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen.